Merry Christmas everyone! Today on The Hookup, I'm going to walk you through the process of setting up the Arduino IDE from scratch to use with the Node MCU and then use my new Holiday LED 2.0 code to easily customize your LED code for your specific house. In my first video about my holiday light Arduino sketch, I mentioned that I rewrote a significant portion of my original code to make it easier for a novice programmer to dig through, modify, and use. And I've gotten a lot of positive feedback, and I've seen some great looking holiday light shows from a lot of you guys. But I've also gotten dozens of emails and comments from viewers who can't quite get things to work the way they want. And specifically, they're having a lot of trouble with the code. For this reason, I've created a new Arduino sketch that I'm calling Holiday Lights 2.0. This new version is much easier to configure for someone with no knowledge of coding. And the end user doesn't need to modify anything outside of the user configuration section. I've also increased the number of zones to six. I'm not going to cover the hardware portion of the setup in this video, and if you haven't seen it, you can check out one of my earlier videos to learn how to set up and install the hardware. This video is about the Arduino programming portion, which seems to be where most people are getting tripped up. We're going to start out with a totally blank slate, and for that, I'm going to use my wife's computer to set this up. That computer has never had the Arduino IDE installed on it, and it's definitely never had an Arduino or ESP8266 board plugged into it. If you've already set up the Arduino IDE and you feel confident with things like adding libraries and updating board configurations, then you can skip this part of the video by jumping to this timestamp. All right, first step. We'll need to grab the Arduino IDE from arduino.cc. Just go to Software, Downloads, and then select the Windows Installer or the OS X Installer if that's your thing. Make sure you don't get the Windows app. It's super buggy when you start using Boards Manager and different libraries. You can just install it with the default options. It's not one of those programs that tries to give you McAfee antivirus or the Yahoo toolbar or one of those random things. This is also a good time to install the driver for the USB to serial chip that's on the Node MCU. It's called a CP2102 and the link for that is down in the description. Just download, extract, and install it. Next, you'll need to start up the Arduino software and select File, Preferences, and then paste in the ESP8266 Boards Manager URL from the description down into the Additional Boards Manager field. Then click OK and then go to Tools, Board, Board Manager, and then type ESP8266 into the search bar and then select the latest stable release, which is 2.4.1, and click Install. After that's done, you can go to File, Examples, Basic, Blink. That's going to pull up a file where you don't need to modify anything in the sketch in order to make it work. So just select Tools, Boards, Node MCU 1.0, and then take note of all the ports that are listed. Next, you'll want to plug in your Node MCU's USB cable and then click on that port menu again. You should see a new port pop up that wasn't previously there, and that's the port you want to select for your Node MCU. You should now be able to click the Upload button to put the Blink sketch onto your Node MCU. And to prove to you that we're all human here, check out what happened to me the first time I clicked Upload. And the second. And the third. And, uh, well, you get the point. I went through all the troubleshooting steps that I know of. I rebooted the computer, I reinstalled the driver, I removed the device using Device Manager and then cycled the USB connection, and nothing seemed to work. And I was getting a bit frustrated. Then I remembered that my wife's USB hub that I had plugged into was made circa 2005. Sure enough, I unplugged the USB cable from that hub and plugged it directly into the motherboard, and my upload worked perfectly. Ugh. Anyways, now we can get to the LED sketch. On my GitHub, under the Holiday LED 2.0 repository, you'll find two files, an INO file and a YAML file. The INO file is the Arduino sketch, so download that file and open it in Arduino. It may ask you if you want to move it to a folder that has the same name, and you can tell it yes. And then we'll need to get our libraries all sorted out. You can see that I've included the URLs for the necessary libraries at the top of the sketch. Just go to each of those URLs and click on Clone or Download, and then Download Zip. Then in the Arduino IDE, you'll select Sketch, Include Library, 
add zip library and repeat that process three times for each of the three libraries that are required. Now if we hit compile, it should think for a while, give us an orange message about using bit banged output, which is fine, and then give us some white text that says everything worked well. Now that you know that you'll be able to upload successfully, you can start updating the files with your credentials for Wi-Fi and MQTT. The client ID is also important because it becomes part of the MQTT topics for this device. So name it something you can remember and don't put any spaces in it. Now it's time for you to customize the file for your roof. This program can drive up to six separate channels of LEDs from a single node MCU, and each channel can be divided up into nine zones. In my year-round setup, I use two zones, so I'm going to put in a 1 for zones 1 and 2, and a 0 for zones 3 through 6. This turns off those zones so the node MCU doesn't have to waste processing power on any unused zones. If you know the exact number of LEDs in your roof line, you can put it in the Zone LEDs section. If you're not exactly sure how many you have, just estimate a number larger than what the actual number likely is. I'm going to estimate on my house that I have 500 LEDs on the first floor and 400 LEDs on the second floor. Assuming you don't already know the number of LEDs in each roof section, just mark that you have one roof section in each zone. And then in the roof section setup, put the starting LED of section 1 as 0 and the ending LED as the same number of LEDs that you defined in the configuration section. So for me, that's 500 for the first floor and 400 for the second floor. Now your initial configuration of the file is done. So double check that your node MCU is plugged in via USB and you've got the right board and port settings in the Arduino IDE. And then click upload. It will save, compile, and then upload to your node MCU. While that's working, let's add our holiday lights to Home Assistant. In the configuration.yaml file, we're gonna add six MQTT lights and one MQTT sensor. In the YAML file on GitHub, you'll need to replace the parts that say MQTT client ID with whatever you decided to put in for your specific device. Mine's called Light MCU. Just copy and paste these entries into the two different sections of your configuration.yaml file, save, and restart Home Assistant. If you use Lovelace, you'll need to add a card for these devices, and if you use groups without Lovelace, you can add them to a group. Examples of both of these are on the GitHub repository. The previous version of this code used MQTT JSON lights, which caused an error with the most recent version of Home Assistant. This one uses plain old MQTT lights, so no problems with that for this version. The previous version also used Node-RED to make the MQTT payloads easier to interpret for a beginner. This one handles all of the payload processing on the ESP8266, so no Node-RED is required. After that's done, you can now plug in your Node MCU to your lights and start mapping out your roof line. For the initial setup, it may be helpful for you to sketch out a picture of your roof line to jot down the beginning and ending LED of each roof section. So go outside, select the LED locator effect, and now you should see the current LED sensor start counting up. Watch your different roof lines and take note of the LED numbers for each section's beginning and ending. If the counter is moving too fast or too slow, you can change the speed of the counter by using the W slider under the Holiday Lights light in Home Assistant. This slider is also going to modify the speed or size of each animation, so play around with it and figure out what you like. The current LED sensor will count up to the maximum number of LEDs you specified in the configuration section, and then it will reset back to zero. Now that you've got your roofline LEDs mapped out, you can go back into the Arduino IDE and update each of the zone's roofline sections. This will automatically modify specific animations so they look like they're custom made for your house. When you've got everything updated, flip the Home Assistant Holiday LED switch to off and then select Light MCU from the port list in the Arduino IDE and then click Upload. Once it finishes, your lights should be fully set up for your specific house. As for the Home Assistant controls, the main holiday lights light has your toggle on and off, your global brightness control, effect selection, and effect modification. Each of the three colors has its own RGB selection and brightness control that's independent from the other colors. The glitter light adds the glitter effect on top of any other effect, and the slider of that effect controls the frequency of glitter and the lightning light adds the lightning effect on top of any other effect, and the slider inside that effect controls the frequency of that lightning effect. 
I have tested this code on my setup and it works really well. But if you find any bugs, please report them on the GitHub page under the Issues tab. I plan to continue to modify this file to add animations and eventually even support E131 control on multiple zones. The great news is that you should be able to just copy over your previous user configuration section to the new versions of the code, upload, and it will all work perfectly. Thank you to my patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel and projects like this one. I hope everyone's having a great holiday. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.